What is up, bud? I am Doug with DNA in the Garage. About two weeks ago, I did a video introducing my theories on the overabundance of new Wranglers rolling off the lot with those blue tow hooks, i.e., hybrids. We discussed that no longer is it the goal of FCA to sell the most Wranglers or even the most Jeeps. The goal now is to sell the most EVs. And I didn't have any intention of revisiting this topic anytime soon, but I read something else, something different something catastrophic for Wranglers, Gladiators, for Jeepers as a whole. Let's get into this one. The source material for this particular rant and rave is a news article on Edmunds.com from about three, four weeks ago discussing the new features and changes to the Wrangler and Gladiator for 2025. Let us read. Jeep just introduced a few updates for the 2025 Wrangler and 2025 Gladiator. And among the changes is something you might not even really notice. BS Jeepers will notice the crank window is officially dead. No, this isn't our hook for today, but it is where we start. The Wrangler and Gladiator were the last two new cars on sale in the US to use crank windows, but now every single one will come with power windows standard. But the changes don't end there. The other big news is that if you want a V6 powered Wrangler, you're going to have to row your own gears the V6 Wrangler is now offered exclusively with a six-speed manual transmission. You can still have the four-cylinder Wrangler with the automatic transmission. However, most V8-powered Wrangler 392s and plug-in hybrid Wrangler 4xEs will come with autos standard. What exactly did we just read? Well, first and foremost, crank windows gone. Sad, yes. Consequential, not so much. But it is kind of cool that, who would have guessed, Jeep was the last company hanging on to the old crank window there. It's kind of cool that they were offering that feature still, but I think in reality it's just a function of the removable doors on the Gladiator and the Wrangler, but nonetheless, gone now. As far as the Wrangler goes, that's where the real crux of this information was. If you want a six-cylinder Wrangler now, it only comes with a five-speed transmission. That's what you get. You can't cannot get an automatic transmission with a five-speed Wrangler. The 392, which is the big V8, and the 4xE, which is the hybrid we talked about last time, you can only have an automatic transmission. The Gladiator, five-speed is gone. Now, what did these two models get in return for loss of these transmission options? Pre-ventilation, which I thought was a misprint or something. It sounds like an issue that old Renix Cherokees would get. You know, in like 2008, you'd go on Jeep forum, there'd be some old timer telling you about brass bushings or something. That's the only way you're gonna sell that pre-ventilation there. No, in reality, it's a climate control feature. You go on your old smartphone there and you tell it, hey buddy, I'm not getting in that Jeep unless it's exactly 62 degrees and the hand warmer's on and the feet warmer's on and the butt warmer's on and the thing warmer's on. That's what pre ventilation is. They couldn't give it a better name that doesn't sound so doomy? I don't know. So deep dive. Let's get into this stuff. First and foremost, can I get a moment of silence for hand crank windows? Wouldn't you know, made it just over a hundred years, ironically, introduced by the Dodge Brothers in 1915. Moving on to the who, what, where, and why, let's start with the Gladiator. Why did they do this to the Gladiator. Well, first and foremost, the Gladiator has been falling off in sales numbers consistently since year one, and it doesn't take a rocket scientist to figure out why. It's a niche vehicle. It's not really a pickup, not really a Wrangler. It's not really an SUV. It's a Gladiator, and there were only ever going to be a certain number of people a certain customer pool for that vehicle. And every year you're depleting them as more and more people buy them. As cars sell less, it's not uncommon for OEMs to narrow down the offering to just make it more easy to keep offering that vehicle. Additionally, the only two pickup trucks in 2024 that had a manual transmission were the Gladiator and the Tacoma. Now it's just the Tacoma, but you could say that the Gladiator is just following the market. Now, what does this mean for the Gladiator? I don't think it means quite a lot. The Gladiator is in a unique position that no other pickup truck on the market is in right now, where the Gladiator is tied to the current Wrangler. They share so many parts. It wouldn't make a ton of sense, unless literally they weren't selling any of them, to stop making the Gladiator while they're making the current JL, JLU. Wrangler. What that means though is once the JLJLU becomes the JM, JMU, does the Gladiator as we know it stick around? Does it get another generation? Personally, I think it goes away. I'll bet it sticks around for another two years and then it goes away as a memory. So if you want the opportunity to own a new Gladiator, 
regardless of transmission choice, 2025 could be your last chance. Moving on down to the Wrangler, why would they do this to the Wrangler? Well, at a high level, non tin foil hat it's a transitional period between yesterday's wrangler and tomorrow's wrangler it's that's where we are with all vehicles right now we are living in a transitional period our children's children will be in a much more stable world because we went through all this nonsense deeper down why do this to the wrangler it's just another way to force evs on you let me break it down for you this is what they want to happen across jeep dealerships somebody walks in a Zoomer, a Millennial, they say, I gotta have a Wrangler. They say, great, we got a ton of them on the lot. Do you want ICE or a hybrid? And they say, I couldn't care less. It doesn't matter to me, don't care. They say, okay, cool. Do you want an automatic transmission or a manual transmission? They say, well, I can't drive a manual transmission. Because everybody knows Millennials can't drive no manual transmission, right? Right, right, yeah, that's the joke. It's a Millennial anti-theft device, tart, tart, tart. But in actuality, I guess Millennials can't drive manual. And Zoomers definitely can, and Gen Alpha? <laughs> Forget about it. They ain't gonna go spell manual transmission. Point being, it's just a sneaky way. They forced that customer into a hybrid. That customer didn't come for a hybrid. They didn't care for a hybrid. They didn't really want a hybrid necessarily, but if you don't want a five speed, gotta get the hybrid. At this point, we need to talk about the fact that the 392 Wrangler is a token offering not long for this world. It's gonna be available until it isn't. Personally, I think it's only there to offer some kind of edge over the Bronco. If at any point the Wrangler does not need an edge over a Bronco, I think the 392 goes away. Now, it's my opinion that Dodge wants to sunset both the 392, which they've obviously already started, and the 36, but they can't kill the 36 because it's just too good of a motor. I know. I know, that's gonna be a hard one to take. Sit down, let me explain. 3.6 is a great motor. It's got one thing it can't do. It's the same thing that all Dodge motors today cannot do, it cannot idle. It's not a good fleet vehicle. If you run a police station, please don't stock your police station with 3.6 or 5.7 Durangos. They're gonna blow up when you idle them for eight hours a day. That's what, for some reason, Dodge builds race motors. They don't build idling motors. For some reason, they can't idle. I, I don't know why they can't figure that out, but all Dodge motors just rip themselves apart as soon as you try to idle them for eight hours a day. So please stop doing that, for the love of God. Now that aside, the 3.6 is a great motor. We own one, we've had one for a while, it's one of the best motors I've had since the 4 liter. And I mean that, it's a great motor. And it goes in everything. This is Dodge's problem, it's too applicable. It, they can't move on to, uh, to EVs and hybrids because of the 3.6. Oh, you got a four-door sedan? 3.6. Oh, you got a Wrangler? 3.6. Oh, you got a minivan? 3.6. Oh, you got a light pickup truck? 3.6. Literally. Anything. I'm surprised there aren't forklifts running around with 3.6 liter Pentastars in them. FCA needs to stop people wanting the 3.6. So how do you do that? Put a transmission in it that nobody can drive. That'll do it. Now what this means is that the 392 Wrangler, I think, is going to be extremely collectible in 20 years. Not a lot of them were sold. There are some that are factory and some that were aftermarket. I think the factory ones are going to be crazy expensive. It's gonna be the last V8 Wrangler. It's gonna be the last real Wrangler. I do think, I do think that's how we'll remember it. That's just a side note. If you've got collectible car money, buy you a 392 Wrangler, tuck her back in the thing there, bring her out in like 20, 25, 30 years. Ooh, I think so. Now, what does all this mean for Wrangler? Well, I could think it could mean a couple things. There is a timeline. I'm gonna want y'all to sit down and take a sip of something real quick. There is a timeline where God's will and the creek level come together to produce this scenario. We have the hybrid 4 by e Wrangler now. In 2028, we're getting a full EV Wrangler. We know this. In this world, those two carry on, pushing the envelope of what an electronic vehicle technology can do in an off-road vehicle. And they continue to make sure that Jeep is at the forefront of wheeling, but they also sell the Wrangler Classic, which is locked in for all time, 4.6 ICE engine, a manual transmission, a manual transfer case in a body on frame construction. That would allow EVs and normal progress to continue, it would allow for the Wrangler to not get left behind, but it maintains that simple platform for off-roading. You can still go get a two-door, highly manual, simple vehicle as your winter beater, as your off-roader, to build your buggy, as your tow behind for the RV. This is a beautiful timeline. It's absolutely amazing, and it's been done before. Dodge did it when they kept the Ram Classic. Ford is doing it right now with the Lightning and the F-150. 
They didn't stop making the gas F-150 for the Lightning, but they recognized that their F-150s are popular and people might want an electric version of that. So let's give them both. Think there's any chance Jeep's gonna do this? Well, the answer is no, and I've already told you why. Gosh, ad nauseum. I'm tired of saying it. You've heard it, you know it. Say it loud for the people in the back. They will never do this because it's not about selling more Jeeps or Wranglers. It's about selling more EVs and hybrids. And if the 3.6 is still alive, you may not buy one of their hybrids. So they won't do this. That's not what's gonna happen. So what does this mean for Wrangler? Well, listen, Jeep's never gonna kill off the Wrangler nameplate. It's too important. There are people out there that'll buy a Wrangler just because that's what it says on the side. No matter what they do to it, that's evident by all the blue tow hook Wranglers I see bumming around here, 47 ducks across the dash. Personally, I think it's gonna go to way of the Blazer. It'll just keep getting watered down. It'll get IFS. It'll be unibody. It'll continue this, that, and a third. And, and they'll always sell a Jeep Wrangler and it'll be the off-roader. You know, they'll put trail rated badges and they'll make a Rubicon version. But I think that what we're witnessing is is a car company that has zero interest in consumer demand and they are fully just riding a wave whether it's a, from their management or they just think this is the way the world's going look what they did to the most popular modern muscle car line they took it out back and shot it in the back of the head like lenny because if you want a fast car you buy an electric car because dodge said so you little prick that's the message i'm getting how about you so then what does this mean for the jeep brand well the jeep brand has this really interesting habit of thriving or at least surviving even as their host is dying i said in the last video it's never been jeep making jeep to be sold as jeeps it's always a parent company and Jeep always buries that parent company. I don't know, maybe Jeep is a serial killer, right? They buried Willis, they buried Kaiser, they buried AMC. You could make an argument that they buried Chrysler because Chrysler is dead and FCA owns both of them now. So I think the Jeep brand continues on, but it, it's looking like it's more of a passenger car brand now. We used to make utility vehicles in the 50s was probably our most diverse offering, right? But we weren't just selling passenger cars. It was Jeepsters and Ford control delivery trucks and that weird really square ice cream truck thing we're getting so far away from that we're just making global cars world cars fiats and other things and calling them jeeps and it's just a mess at some point fca clearly fails and this gets broken up and then somebody else will own jeep and i don't know where we go from there depends on who buys them that's honestly what i believe happens i think in 20 years maybe 10 years somebody else will own them what does all this do for fca as a whole FCA. And you guys know I don't talk like that in my videos. FCA is a sinking ship and there's no way I'm going to be the last asshole standing on the Lido deck waving a Jeep flag. They don't listen to their customers. They're not interested in playing on their history. They're not interested in maintaining their legacy. They have just been taken over by corporate greed and a bloated, gangrenous company that has no ability, no ability for success. And like everybody knows it, it's a standing joke. Just for the love of God, Walter P. Chrysler's descendants are writing letters to the management of FCA begging that he sell the Dodge Chrysler Plymouth brands to anybody to try to save them. I'm looking forward to the day where FCA is not a company anymore and Jeep is spun off to somebody else. Hey, I think it's Ford's turn. Now, what does all this mean for the rest of the world? I, I honestly believe that the world needs Jeep almost as much now as we did in 1941. What the people need, what the people want, what they're begging for is somebody to make cheap, simple, affordable vehicles again. And there's only one company who said, yeah, that's what you want, we'll do that. And it's Toyota. And that breaks my heart. And the worst part is, because of our ridiculous government, we can't have them here in the United States. Does that seem like freedom to you? I'm actually planning a video on the chicken tax. If you'd like to see that, leave a link down in the squawk boxes. Otherwise, the fat electrician has an amazing video on it. Go watch his. The point is, Jeep could do it. They could build a small, affordable truck or any vehicle in Detroit if they wanted to. But instead, they're making $120,000 Wagoneers. I desperately hope I don't have to talk about Wrangler again anytime soon because the only reason I would, I mean, if this situation got worse, what else could they do? Maybe it's gonna be a two wheel vehicle now. Maybe it doesn't come with a floor anymore. That'd be interesting, right? So let me know what you think down there in the squawk boxes. You got one of these new Wranglers? Do you like it? Am I totally off base? Do you think everything I said is nuts? Or do you agree that FCA has lost their way and they're dragging down our storied American brands with them? Dodge, Chrysler, Jeep. What's it gonna look like in another five, 10 years? Let me know down below, tell me what you think. As always, thanks for watching. See you next time. I desperately hope the next one can be a happier topic.